In the previous video we looked at uh, calculating normal stresses in beams and in this case we're going to look at shear stresses in beams. Before we do that, make a few general comments about shear stresses in beams. Um, usually the maximum value of shear stress occurs at the neutral axis. That's always the case if the thickness at the uh, neutral axis is uh, as small as it is anywhere else in the beam. So when we have a rectangular cross section, uh, when we have an I-beam, a T-beam, then the uh, uh, maximum shear stress is going to occur at the neutral axis. If the thickness varies, then, uh, then that may not be the, be the case. Um, at the top and the bottom of the cross section, though, we know that the shear stresses are going to be zero because those are free surfaces at the top and the bottom. And finally, we also uh, will note that when we calculate shear stresses, they're almost always much lower in magnitude than the normal stresses in the beam. The exception would be if the uh, beam is a very short beam. Uh, for example, a bolt can be considered to be a short beam. Uh, railroad ties sometimes will, will fail in shear, will crack along the uh, uh, mid-surface of, uh, uh, of the cross tie. But for most beams, uh, especially uh, like in machine design or in, or in construction, the span of the beam is, is much longer and the shear stresses are quite low. And in fact, a lot of times we simply ignore the shear stresses. And, um, it, not only is the magnitude low, but uh, also think about where they occur. The normal stresses are going to be the highest at the top and the bottom of the beam, but the shear stresses are going to be zero there, so they don't really add anything to the, uh, to the stress state. And if we look where the shear stresses are the greatest, near the neutral axis, of course, the bending stresses, uh, normal stresses, are zero there. So again, in machine design, construction, a lot of times the shear stresses are, uh, are ignored. One place where they are important, though, is if we make up a um, a built up section. In this case, we're looking at a T beam we've looked at before. And if we assume those are one by six boards, then maybe we've glued them together. And so, what the um, glue has to be able to do is withstand the shear stresses to be able to um, make that, make those two boards work together as a unit. Now, the example we're going to look at is the same uh, example we looked at in the uh, normal stress uh, examples. Uh, we've got a distributed load over an 8-foot span, and then there's an overhanging portion with a 400-foot, uh, excuse me, 400-pound uh, force out at the end, again, the T-beam that we just looked at. And before we actually calculate the stresses, I want to show you the results of a finite element analysis model here. Uh, so you can see the supports there shown in green. A distributed load is shown by a pressure distribution and the concentrated force out on the end. Now, this has been analyzed two different ways, and we're going to show the displaced shapes. Um, the multiplier, uh, the displacements are multiplied by a factor of 50 so that they uh, can be seen a little easier. And if we treat this as all one uh, cross section, in other words, assuming that the bond uh, holds well, then we get a deflected shape uh, that looks like this. Again, keep in mind that the actual deflections are much, much smaller than that. We multiplied them by 50 to be able to see them better. But what if the bond breaks? Well, in that case, we can change the analysis a little bit such that there's contact pressure between the two uh, parts without it being bonded. In other words, they're allowed to slip relative to each other, and you can see the uh, uh, displacements are much greater. And also, the stresses will be much greater uh, as well if the uh, uh, two boards don't act together as a unit. So it is important here when we calculate the shear stresses that the uh, glue that we choose, or fasteners as, as the case may be, be able to resist the shear stresses that are, um, that are present at that bond line. So the shear diagram, we did this uh, earlier, and um, we see that the highest magnitude of shear force is uh, 500 pounds that exists uh, at uh, the support at B. And the section properties have been calculated earlier. Uh, we see that the uh, location of the neutral axis is four and three quarters inches above the bottom of the beam, and that the moment of inertia is uh, 55 and a quarter inches to the fourth. Now, our shear stress formula, the shear stress is VQ over IT, where V is the shear force that we get off of the shear diagram. Q is the first moment of area. In other words, it's the area times the distance of the uh, from the centroid of that area to the neutral axis. And 
which area do we use? Well, it depends on where we want to um, calculate the shear stress. We're looking at all the area either above or below the point at which we want to calculate the shear stress, as we'll see in the example in just a moment. Moment of inertia of the entire cross section is I, and the thickness is um, uh, self explanatory there. Uh, and you can see that built into this formula is the assumption that the, thick, the uh, shear stress will be, the, will be equal at that point, um, at that height within the beam. In other words, it's constant across the thickness. So in this case, if we're trying to find the shear stress at the glue joint, we want to look at the area either above or below that point. So the shaded area here would be all of the area that's above the glue joint. And so, again, we know the V was 500 pounds. Uh, we don't really care much about the, uh, about the sign here. Uh, positive shear and negative shear really doesn't make any difference. Uh, you know, a lot different than in normal stresses where tension and compression can, uh, can be quite different, but the sign of the shear stress really isn't that important. Um, the Q value, the first moment of area, as we said, is A times Y bar. Well, A is the area above the uh, point of interest, which in this case would just be uh, the six square inches shown in the blue area. And the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of that area, in this case, you can see that that would be uh, 1.25 plus a half an inch or 1.75 inches. So our Q value is calculated as 10 and a half cubic inches. Moment of inertia, we already know, and the thickness will be one inch. Uh, and you can see if we were just above that point, we could use a thickness of six inches to calculate the shear stress in the wood in the flange. If we were just below that, we would use the one inch to calculate the shear stress in the, uh, in the web. But at the glue line, the glue line is only one inch wide, so therefore we use the thickness of one inch and plug in those numbers in and you can see what the uh, uh, the units will give us the units of stress or PSI and the answer is 95 PSI is the shear stress at the glue joint. So that's that's the stress that our glue would have to be uh, capable of resisting with whatever uh, factor of safety we want to put on that. Now if I want to know what the uh, maximum shear stress is in the um, in the wood itself as we said earlier, that's going to occur at the neutral axis if the thickness is the is minimal at the neutral axis, which it is in this case. And so again, in, uh, V, I, T would all be the same here. The only difference would be the value of Q. So in this case, I would be looking at the um, area times the Y bar of uh, both of these uh, shaded blue segments here. In other words, the first one was at uh, an area of six square inches and that is 1.75 inches its centroid above the neutral axis and then I would add the second portion here which is an area of uh, 1.25 times one or one and a quarter square inches and its uh, Y bar value would be half of uh, 1.25 or 0.625 so I would add that A times Y bar and gives me a total value for the uh, first moment of area of 11.281 inches cubed. Again, everything else is the same, so plug those numbers in and you find out that the uh, maximum shear stress at the neutral axis is 102 PSI, so a few PSI bigger than, uh, than what's at the bond line. But again, the wood would uh, normally have a, a much higher shear strength than the, than the glue. Now, as we said, we could use either the area above or below the point of interest. So here's just an alternate approach here. Instead of taking the uh, two pieces above the neutral axis, we can simply look at the one shaded area below the neutral axis. And in this case, that uh, shaded area is 4.75 square inches. And Y bar value, uh, distance from the neutral axis to the uh, centroid is 2.375. So when you multiply those together, we get the same value of Q that we did when we looked at the areas above uh, the point. And again, same calculation. So 102 PSI is the maximum shear stress at the neutral axis.